This video will help you safely operate and maintain John Deere's Model 1600 Turbo Wide Area Mower. The 1600 Turbo Wide Area Mower has some features that are unique when compared to most front deck commercial mowers. The unit has a liquid cooled 64 horsepower diesel engine, 22 gallon tank, and a maximum mowing width of almost 11 feet. The outer cut decks can be raised independently allowing this large machine to mow in tight spots with just one or two decks. The wing decks are shock absorbing to reduce shock and damage should they impact an immovable object during operation. With proper maintenance and operating methods, your wide area mower will give you years of safe, trouble-free mowing. Remember, the most important responsibility you have when working with any piece of power equipment is your own safety as well as the safety of the people and property around you. Do not take this responsibility lightly. Also keep in mind that this video does not replace your printed operator's manual. So before mowing, familiarize yourself with the safety and operation section of the printed manual. If you have any questions about the information in this video, ask your John Deere dealer. We'll cover several areas in this video, including the operating instruments and controls, things to do and check before mowing, how to start the wide area mower and mow, and what to do when you are finished mowing. Let's start by becoming familiar with the controls on the wide area mower. Several controls and instruments are included on the steering column. In addition to the steering wheel are the key switch, the parking brake lock, and the steering column lock. The steering column can be adjusted for and aft for best operator comfort. The instrument cluster at the top of the steering column is made up of two separate gauges. The first includes the glow plug indicator, battery charge indicator, oil pressure light, and high temperature indicator. Also notice the 1600 turbo temperature gauge located on the steering column. See the operator's manual for information about normal indicator readings. The forward and reverse drive pedals are on the floorboard to the right of the steering column. Press down on the inner forward pedal to move forward and press on the outer reverse pedal to move in reverse. For mowing in tight turns, the 1600 Turbo features standard turn brakes. Turn brakes can be applied as a traction aid or to reduce your turning radius. Simply feather the left or right turn brake to control traction on the front left or right wheels. A cruise control switch on the right side of the steering column allows the operator to select a set speed for the forward pedal. The steering column also features a rocker switch to control the 1600 Turbo headlights. An optional light kit is also available. The master brake is on the right of the steering column. Push down on the pedal and pull up on the brake lock lever to lock the brake for parking. Press the pedal down and push down the lock lever to release the parking brake. The differential lock forces both front drive wheels to drive if slippery operating conditions are hampering traction. Stop the mower's forward or reverse motion. Press down and hold the pedal to engage the differential lock. Then press down on the forward or reverse pedal to continue mowing. On the console to the operator's right are control rocker switches to raise and lower each of the three cutting decks. Depress the switch to raise or lower the decks. This switch functions much like the driver's power window switch in a car. Once you depress the switch and release, the decks will lower fully. The engine speed control or throttle lever is also to the operator's right. Move the throttle levered forward to increase engine speed. Pull back to decrease engine speed. The mower deck PTO switch is used to control cutting decks and other powered attachments. All three decks are operated with the single switch. The transmission high-low ranges lever is used to select either of two different drive speed ranges. The mechanical rear wheel drive or MRWD engagement lever selects either on-demand or full-time modes of MRWD operation. The hour meter records the total number of hours the engine is operated. The seat is equipped with several controls to adjust for different operators comfort. These include fore and aft position, ride suspension control, seat height adjustment, lumbar support, and backrest angle. The seat belt must always be fastened in operation since the 1600 Turbo is equipped with a rollover protection structure, or ROPS. For more information on location and use of these controls, refer to the operator's manual. Next, let's take a look at some things you should do before you begin mowing. 
To protect yourself, be sure to wear the correct clothing. This includes sturdy work shoes, safety glasses to protect your eyes, earplugs for noise protection, and when appropriate, work gloves and a hard hat. Also, wear pants, shirt, and a jacket that fit you closely. Next, check the mower, making sure guards and shields are securely fastened and there is no damage. Be sure you read and understand the warning decals. If the decals are damaged and unreadable, check the operator's manual for the decal's message and replace any decals that are damaged. Look under the machine for oil, which may have escaped from the system. If oil is discovered, have the unit checked by a technician and repaired before further use. Check the tires for damage or excessive wear. Then use an accurate gauge to make sure the tires are correctly and evenly inflated. The front and rear tires are inflated to 20 PSI. The caster wheel tires should be inflated to 40 PSI. If you must add air, the operator's manual lists several safety precautions regarding compressed air and tire inflation. Also check the fuel gauge reading located beside the exterior fuel fill before mowing and add fuel if necessary. Next, move to the rear of the unit for engine and hydraulic system maintenance. A handy service interval decal is located under the engine hood. Refer to this decal for daily and periodic service requirements. Check the engine oil level. The oil level on the dipstick should be toward the upper part of the run area marked on the dipstick. If it is necessary to add oil, fill only to the upper mark. Do not overfill. Refer to the operator's manual for the correct oil type for your wide area mower engine. After ensuring that the engine is cold, check the coolant level by removing the radiator cap and confirming that the system is full to the top of the radiator neck. If necessary, add a 50-50 mix of antifreeze and water to the overflow tank. See the operator's manual for the correct antifreeze for your engine. Also check the fan and alternator drive belt for cracking, fraying, and proper tension. Check the fuel filter for water or contaminants in the bottom of the bowl. Next, check the air restriction indicator which monitors engine air filter condition. If the red indicator moves up to the service window, change the primary element, reset the indicator, and run the engine up to full throttle. If the red indicator returns to the window, change the secondary element. Follow the operator's manual instructions for air filter service to prevent contaminating the air intake with dust or debris. A sight tube on the rear side of the hydraulic reservoir makes level checks convenient. The level must be between the marks when the oil is cold. If additional fluid is required, fill to the indicated level with the fluid recommended in your operator's manual. Check the oil level in the rear axle at the dipstick on the right axle housing. If your checks and inspections reveal any questionable conditions, have them checked and corrected before mowing. Before starting the engine, check the safety interlock system. This system prevents the engine from starting unless the PTO switch is off and the motion control pedals are in neutral. In addition, either the operator must be in the seat or the parking brake must be locked. To check the system, disengage the brake and turn the key to start while out of your seat. The engine should not crank. Now sit in the seat. Engage the PTO and turn the key to start. Again, the engine should not crank. Next, turn the PTO off. Press the motion control pedals inward individually and turn the key to start. As before, the engine should not crank. To start the engine, sit in the seat and fasten the seat belt. Make sure the parking brake is engaged and the mower deck drive is off. With the throttle set at about half speed, turn the key to the run position. The engine preheater indicator light will come on as the intake manifold is preheated for starting. When the light goes out, turn the key to start the engine. The wide area mower also has an operator present safety system, which will stop the engine if the operator leaves the seat while the PTO is operating, either motion control pedal is depressed, or the parking brake is unlocked. The engine must be running to perform this test. Start the PTO. Then lift out of your seat. The engine should stop. Move the PTO to off and one at a time activate each motion control pedal and release the parking brake lifting out of the seat after each control is activated. The engine should stop with each control check.
be sure to test this system before mowing. When the cutting decks are raised off the ground, the blades should stop rotating. In addition, the interlock system prevents the cutting decks from being lowered unless the operator is in the seat. If your mower fails any of these tests, be sure to have it repaired by a qualified technician before mowing, and never disable any of these safety systems. If you're using this mower for the first time, find an open area clear of debris. Spend time getting familiar with the controls and how the machine feels, responds, and operates. To continue, check the height of cut before mowing. The adjustment spacers can be changed by sliding them on or off the spindle at the flat near the bottom. Always confirm the cutting height to be at the desired height in a fringe area before starting to cut large areas. Refer to the operator's manual for spacing combinations and various cutting heights. Finally, we have a warning about rotary mowers. Always, repeat, always keep your hands, feet, and clothing away from underneath the deck and the rotating blades. Before going near the cutting deck, disengage the PTO, turn off the engine, and be sure the blades have completely stopped turning. Many accidents happen when we react without thinking. Always stop and think before reacting. Proper preparation is as important in safe and efficient use as actual operation. Don't cut corners in preparation. It may cost you later. Now, let's talk about mowing with the wide area mower. Before you mow, walk around the work area and pick up debris or other objects that may be laying in the mowing area. Before starting, check around you for bystanders. Engage the blade drive or PTO. Slowly push down on the forward or reverse motion control pedal to start moving. Whenever you mow, always stay focused on what you're doing. By design, wide area mowers require careful attention when trimming close to objects. Always slow down when turning to maintain traction with all drive wheels and to reduce scuffing of the grass surface. The wide area mowing stance makes it more stable mowing up and down the slope. Avoid turning on slopes and always use caution. If possible, wait to mow wet and sloped areas until the grass is dry. The machine can lose traction and control on wet slopes. Besides, 